and welcome to Terminus Tactical. Today, we're going to be taking a look at an absolute legend of the airsoft world. This is Terminus Tactical, and this is the Tokyo Marui MK23. Hi, and welcome to Terminus Tactical. So in my hand here, I have the TM Socom MK23, pretty much as it is out of the box. And as you can see, she's a big girl. She's extremely long, and we'll have most of you out there trying to run this pistol looking like a bitch. Now, just for reference, so you can see that I'm not kidding, let's do a live side-by-side -side comparison of the TM MK23 and an MP7. Wow. From the tip of the suppressor all the way to the rear of the hammer, she comes in at a whopping 17 inches. Yeah. That's around 43 centimeters. In fact, out of the box, the Tokyo Marui MK23 is longer than the queue of Taliban waiting outside Waterstones for Harry's book signing. So before we start, let's take a look at the markings on the Tokyo Marui MK23. So on the right hand side of the pistol, we have the Tokyo Marui branding with Made in Japan. And at the bottom of the grip, they're letting us know it's a Socom MK23. So flip it around to the left hand side and we have the HK US Government Cal 0.45 markings. That's of course because the real steel version is chambered as a 45 calibre. Go to the bottom of the pistol grip and again we have HK 0.45. So there is some mild stippling on the pistol's left and right side of the grip, along with a serrated edge on the back strap and inner grip just here. So what about the working parts of this pistol? Well, we have a working double action hammer right here. The slide release on the left side is actually a working safety catch. But just like its real steel counterpart, so it can stay cocked and holstered, ready for immediate use. It has an ambidextrous safety catch right here. By now, most of you already know that the TM Tokyo Marui MK23 is a non-gas blowback. That's right, that means the slide doesn't cycle when you fire the pistol. Now there are many reviewers out there that have said this is unrealistic. No it's not. Do your research you muppets. TM did not initially manufacture this pistol intending it to be gas efficient. Yeah. Yes, that's one of the major USPs of this pistol. However, it was also accidental. You see, the TM Socom MK23 is based on the original design of the Socom MK23. Oh. So one of the requirements set forward from Socom was that it would have a slide that you can lock into place. That's because once a pistol is suppressed, the next loudest sound that you have to worry about after that is of course the cycling of the slide going backwards and forwards. Hence why the Tokyo Marui design of the MK23 has that aesthetic pleasingly feel of being able to cycle it individually as so. The fact that it's gas efficient, which it is, is just a USP that Tokyo Marui started to use after its release. While on this subject, for those of you that would like a more in-depth review of the Real Steel MK23, I highly recommend the Forgotten Weapons YouTube channel. This guy really knows his shit. So the LAM unit or laser aiming module that comes out of the box with this version of the Tokyo Marui MK23 is actually the LAM unit from the original variant. However, the suppressor design you see here came from a latter variant. So the TM Socom MK23 is actually a Frankenstein variant of two variations built by H&K. They've taken all the better looking parts and put them into one. So there is no doubt in my mind that this was and still is one of the best airsoft versions of the MK23 that you can buy out there today. However, unlike the rest of the pistol, which has an extremely strong polymer frame, polymer slide and metal suppressor, this thing is made of an extremely low grade plastic. In fact, Nerf guns are made with better material. So am I now able to deliver you the news and tell you that this LAM unit, despite the crap material that it's made from, delivers in other areas? Absolutely not. It's a complete pile of bloody <laughs> shite. So the real steel version of the laser aiming module had a torch and a laser which could both be seen with the naked eye. Subsequently, it also had an infrared torch and laser for use with night vision goggles. So at first glance, it looks like it has all the bells and whistles of the original LAM unit on the Socom MK23. 
However, all you get is this extremely dull white light and a fake laser at the top here. So if you're thinking about going out there and blowing over a grand on a pair of night vision goggles to use with this LAM unit, please still do. Because you, my friend, will be an absolute laughing stock. And let's face it, there's nothing like watching a complete twat ball his eyes out when the glass and his 1,000 pound pair of night vision goggles get shot out by a six millimeter BB. So aside of the paddle on the LAM unit, which activates your torch and fake laser, the only other thing that really does anything is this right here. And this is for attaching your LAM unit to your threaded insert on your pistol. So just to give you an idea of just how shockingly terrible the torch on the TM LAM unit actually is, it's lights out time. Not only will you look like a complete dick running around with this terrible LAM unit on your TM MK23, but you'll also project one on the wall in front of you wherever you point your pistol. This is because the suppressor is so incredibly long, it pushes out in front of the beam of the torch on the actual LAM unit, as you can see here. Have you actually seen anyone on an airsoft skirmish field trying to draw the Tokyo Marui MK23 out of a top-loading holster? I have, and they look something like this. Absolutely ridiculous. So, the cheap plastic lamb unit, gone. The stupidly oversized suppressor, gone. Here's what your MK23 should look like when you have finished upgrading it. So the original suppressor has been replaced by a much smaller stubby suppressor and the original LAM unit by a much more functional one, which has a fully working torch, good enough for blinding someone with, and a working laser. But look, all jokes aside, the original version of the Tokyo Marui MK23 is aesthetically pleasing. It does look kind of cool and feels great in the hands. Actually, I will say this for it. When holstered, it does feel incredibly pleasing, gives me a side pipe and makes me feel something like this guy. So look, if you decide that being a dick and running the original version of the out of the box MK23 is for you, what do you do about the holster situation? Well, there's a simple answer for that. You get one of these side retention holsters, the MK23 simply clicks in and out with a press of the button and holds firmly into place. Now the real steel version of the Mark 23 has a decocking lever right here, which do I really need to tell you what it does? It, it decocks the hammer. However, with Tokyo Marui's airsoft version of the MK23, it's just there for aesthetic look and does absolutely nothing. Now for me it's a complete shame because there are now other airsoft manufacturers out there making new versions of the MK23 with working decocking levers. Tokyo Marui did manage to get this right. The magazine release is absolutely on point because when you hit that magazine release switch and that magazine drops out, it's as smooth as a baby's bum. So why the extra wide trigger guard? Well, this is one of the requests put in before the development of the real steel MK23, so anyone operating it wouldn't snag their fingers when wearing gloves. So one of the things that will drive you absolutely insane about the MK23 is removing the slide to get to the hop unit and then replacing the slide again afterwards. So my advice to you if you're thinking about investing into any Airsoft MK23 platform is to go straight to Hadron Airsoft Designs and invest in one of these bad boys. This is the Hadron Airsoft Designs TDC cover. It simply allows you to adjust your hop externally using an Allen or hex key. They're extremely simple to install. You simply remove the slide, take out the cover from the injector port and replace it with the TDC. So when it comes to actually replacing the original suppressor or LAM unit, I'm afraid it's not as simple as just swapping them in and out. You see, like the real steel version of the MK23, it comes with no wrist rail. And the LAM unit, well, that was made to fit. Now to replace your LAM unit, there is a simple workaround. You simply go online and for a couple of pounds or dollars, you can pick up one of these adapters. It goes in place of the original LAM unit and gives you your rail right there. So the suppressor workarounds are not so simple. However, it's not rocket science. You see, the thread on the MK23 is 16 mil and not your standard 14. Meaning if you want to use one of your 14 millimeter suppressors, you need a 16 to 14 millimeter adapter. However, there are two other pretty simple ways you can get a suppressor to fit your Tokyo Marui MK23. One 
is you can get one specially 3D printed just like this one here. The other suppressor workaround is to take the original suppressor and remove the thread mount because it's not fixed. Unscrew your 14 millimeter threaded end off your chosen suppressor and replace it with your 16 millimeter version, just like we've done with this stubby version just here. While on the subject of upgrades, if you're one of those people who likes to put your pistol into a carbine kit and run it as a primary, there's plenty of options out there. One quick search on Google, you'll bring up pretty much exactly what you need. So I'm now gonna get changed, and we're gonna head off outside to the mini range, so I can show you just how accurate the TM MK23 actually is. So before we send any shots down range, let's chrono the pistol first. So now using the same ASG Blaster 0.25 gram BBs, we're gonna send 10 shots downrange from a distance of 10 meters into this target right here so we can see what the grouping's like. So watching these shots being fired, I'm sure you'll agree with me that the Tokyo Marui MK23 is extremely accurate with only one single stray round which fired to the top left hand side of the target. That really is pretty impressive grouping. For the purpose of this particular range test, I decided to use this fully modded Tokyo Marui MK23. It comes complete with a crazy jet barrel, Autobot bucking, and as explained earlier, the TDC mod here on top. Something else I'd like to mention is that it's only seven degrees outside. So all you airsoft pros will know that cold temperatures like that do have quite a significant effect when using a gas pistol. So both the suppressors that we've used for the purpose of filming this video, including the original Tokyo Marui MK23 suppressor and the stubby suppressor that we've added here are purely for aesthetic looks and will have no bearing on the FPS output of your pistol. Unlike the ASG version of the MK23, where their suppressor, when connected, actually acts as a barrel extension, giving you a higher FPS output. But look, if the thought of using a suppressor as a barrel extension actually gets you wet, do be warned. As after owning the ASG MK23 before the Tokyo Marui version, I have to say that the ASG version of the MK23 compared to this bad boy is extremely cheap and tacky. So that's it from me today at Terminus Tactical, as well as the Tokyo Marui MK23. And as crap as this always sounds, please don't forget to like, share, comment, and click that subscribe button so I can continue to make amazing videos to stop you having to to watch the rest of the crap out there on YouTube.